Hey guys, Ocean Ray here. Um, today I'm going to be doing a making of video, kind of like just how Seamus says it. Um, if you don't know who that is, so leave a description, uh, a link in the description to his channel. Um, so for this part, it's going to be split up into three parts. Um, first, I'm going to show you guys the arrangement of this song. This song is actually a uh, chaos country from my World of Emotions album. Um, so I'm going to show you like kind of my thought process through the whole song and then the next one will be how I made most of the sounds and then the next episode will be uh, how I mix the track. Um, mine probably won't be as long as his because he does like an hour and he usually does them in live streams so I don't, I can't. I could do a live stream, but nobody would watch it, so whatever. Um, but yeah, so let's get started. So first off in the song, we have this whole chord melody thing here. And um, when I first made this, I actually made just this part which is a huge kind of chord thing. So that just rises up and then it's like it's like an intro that just kind of rises up and then I had this cool down going on here. Um, this sound is like, it's a cool like kind of chordy effect thing. I'll show you guys how to make that in the next episode. And then this one is just a kind of pluck bass. That just plays the lowest no, it plays the second lowest note in the in the chord, and then this is like a lead. This is pretty much the main lead for the whole song. So there's that there, um, and then it goes up to like this small riser here. I, I actually didn't have this at first, but then I made it um, over here, and I was like, that would pretty much sound perfect right there before the hit, because um, it would just kind of sound natural. And what this is, is you might actually not even notice it when you're listening to the song, but it's kind of like a metal, metalish sounding swoop thing. And obviously to the bass hit. Um, I made these bases um, in armor. This is what I'll play what they originally sounded like. So this, which is super simple and stuff. But it's on the perfect when I resampled them. So I thought that was awesome. Um, but this is here is it's actually a reverb um, that makes it makes a metalish sound. It gives it that little kind of thing at the end. Um, at this point, I was going through here and I was making all this kind of stuff, but I didn't have any of these samples yet and pretty much when I finished it I was like I should add some samples in here so I have these siren samples and these gun samples and then here's another one here So that's cool. Um, but 
by this point I had added uh, this chord thing which wouldn't play because actually I think it's uh, Yeah, this is the, uh, I believe it's this sound. Yeah, it's that sound just being played quickly. And I thought it sounded cool. It reminded me of something like from Nero, which I thought was awesome. Um, up here there's this simple drum loop. And then uh, sometimes there's extra drum hits. And right here. Which leads into a drum beat. Um, like this. Which I thought sounded awesome. Because like with all these basses going on and stuff. It just sounds like super punchy. And uh, this is that main lead just being chopped up. Uh, just playing two notes and then uh, we have the basses just arranged in a little bit different order because if it was in the same order it kind of sounded a little weird during this build up so I changed it up a little bit and uh, added this yeah so there's that going on um, and then that metallic swoop thing again. Now, when I was going through the drop, I didn't know what to do. Like, all I knew, I think I had this down. That was it. Just that. Like, I didn't have the melody, I didn't have this arp in, it was just this. But I was like, that sounds freaking awesome. So I'm going through and I'm adding just random bases everywhere, kind of. Uh, so I thought this was like the coolest thing ever. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll solo some of these bases for you guys. Um, that f the first hit is this one I think maybe it's not maybe it's its own bass uh, what is this oh yeah it is its own bass <laughs> that's right yeah it's this right here um, I think I don't remember how I made that one I know it's uh obviously uh, Harmon resampling, but I think I made the sound in Massive first and then resampled it in Harmon. Um, I'll show you guys how to do that in the next episode. And then there's this one. And then this bass is this one right here. So they're the same thing. Um, and this is kind of like a little growly whatever thing that I had. But I thought it fit pretty much perfectly with the rest of the song. And this little screen bass thing I had there. Um, this is more the growl. Which actually I don't even know why that's there but... But yeah, and I start. I started to make pretty much this last part go with the notes uh, of the main lead, which is this one. Oops, just. So yeah. Um. I think this is maybe a new sound. Yeah, this is like a weird growl bass thing that I made. Um, and I just have it playing triplets over the over the track. Yeah, and this is 
is another resampled bass that came from this sound. So yeah, there's a lot of things you can do when you resample stuff that just makes it sound a million times better. And it's pretty interesting, honestly. Like, most of these basses wouldn't sound as good as they would if I hadn't resampled it and then added a, you know, a couple little extra effects that just make a huge difference. Um, actually, you know what? I didn't show you guys this weirdness here. This is uh, like this pitch drop thing. Uh, It's, it's weird. Hold on. <laughs> uh. Yeah. So it sounds like that, but you won't actually hear it. Uh, hear that laser sound. <coughs> um, because of the, comp uh, the side chain. But you can still hear the kind of rising effect to it. And I think, I thought it sounded cool. It was like, kind of just a point in the song where everything goes almost quiet um, and then all that's left is just a uh, sub bass that's basically what it is and um and then I go to this part and I was like I want to turn this into more like a dubstep sounding track um, so I have it kind of break for a second And then um, I started playing the gun effect, but what I did was not just play it, but I cut out, um, I turned off the keys volume completely. And by keys, I mean I wrote all the non basses melodies, and all that stuff to a keys channel. And the volume of the keys channel was being put to zero as soon as that effect hits. <laughs> So it's just that sound, because I wanted that sound to be soloed, like, perfectly. This sound here was changed about a million times because I didn't know what to put there, but all I knew is I wanted this pattern. That's it. I was just like, I want this pattern, but I don't know what sound sounds good there. And I'm still debating because honestly, I think I could have done better. But, uh, I don't know. Uh, pretty much the rest of this is all just the same sounds, just arranged in different orders. And let me solo this. goes through all of that. Uh, the drum patterns at these parts are pretty simple. I would play them, but I don't remember what the stupid thing is where. Right there. Okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. So yeah, it kind of goes through these little breaks pretty much every time uh, this growl happened, and I thought it sounded really cool. Because the song never lost its momentum even though the drum beat slowed down. And then it goes into the same drum beat as 52 but with hi-hats. This drum beat here, to me, just sounds absolutely fucking awesome. Because it's like... 
uh, it's hard to explain, but I just think it sounds so cool. Just the way the hi hats are set up. Because to me, it sounds like almost like a tribal beat or something like that. Um, and going over all these bases, I just think it sounds perfect. <laughs> Now I wasn't paying attention too much when I made this song, so the hi hats actually aren't even loud enough to hear pretty much. But uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, this goes into a simple drum beat, and it pretty much just goes back to the same thing as the beginning, but it has the pluck bass under it. So yeah, that very beginning first chord that I showed you guys, uh, it ends here just because I knew it was really loud. And pretty much by, like right after I figured out, hey, this is probably too loud to put there, I actually made this part specifically, for, or this part specifically for that. Um, and I thought it sounded awesome. And this was actually at the beginning originally, but um, I thought it sounded better here. And I just have uh, what I call a cinematic movie base going under it. I don't remember why I called it that, but, you know, whatever. Um, and I think this is just that chord sound. Yeah, it is. You can't hear that, but I can. It's just that chord sound um, from the beginning. And then I have a drum beat, rises up, um, and then I go to this part, and I think this part is kind of funny, because if you've ever heard of FL Slayer, which is a really crappy guitar and VST sampler thing, um, everyone says don't use it. Now, Pretty much, I got this idea from Seamless. Um, I was watching one of his live streams, I think, and he was going over metal tracks and how he was talking about how um, the guitars are kind of stereo separated over the basses. Well, so that's what I did: is I took the guitar, made it play the same sample as the bass. But I stereo separated it, and obviously the bass is um, turned almost to mono. So this is what that sounds like. Well, personally, to me, <coughs> that sounds freaking awesome. Okay, I'm back. So the phone just rang, and it's right next to my computer. So it's really loud, probably. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, this is like. I've never actually even heard anyone else use FL Slayer, but this is the best way you can use it. I think that sounds pretty flipping professional, just saying. Um, <laughs> and then uh, it breaks into this part. This uh, little thing right there. Um, Mm. That's a scientific term, by the way. Uh, is this beginning bass just chopped up? Um, and then I think I have this, which is that one bass that I'm still not sure of that I used here. 
And then I have uh, that weird riser thing that I was telling you guys about. And the growls afterwards. And um, this pretty much goes through. And the only thing different after that is this here. Because it's playing the notes of uh, the melody. I just can't really hear it, but, you know, that's the point. Um, and then it goes back to this dubstep-ish part here, and then it ends off with this. show you guys how I made that weirdness later as well. Um, I didn't actually show you guys the lead just itself yet. But, um, Which, that there isn't the actual melody, that's the counter melody. Uh, the actual melody is played here. And then I have uh, an ARP playing the same notes, just in a chord. Which sounds pretty chaotic, but with the rest of the track it sounds fine. Um, what else to show you guys? I think that's it. <laughs> um, so that's pretty much my thought process through the whole song. Um, I'll probably do another video for you guys later about, you know, other stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, leave a like if this, you know, helped you out with some bass ideas or some song ideas and, uh, yeah comment if you think it was cool yeah <laughs> so yeah thanks for watching um bye